This is the basic construction of a line only cylinder form. Cylinders can get kind of complex because you're working with ellipses. And what we know about ellipses is that they are mathematically perfect. They have to be symmetrical in all four quadrants. And what you begin with is two approximation, uh, approximations of ellipses and two sides. This is just a guess. The third thing that you do is you put an axis down the middle. And you want the axis to extend all the way above and below the top and bottom ellipses. Then you put in a horizontal axis through each ellipse. So you'll notice that the sides and the horizontal axis make a rectangle. Then you can go through and begin to refine the ellipses to make sure that the axes are symmetric the axes are symmetrical um, and that your ellipse is accurate and has a perfect curve around all four quadrants and this takes some time and a ton of practice you will want to fill pages and pages and pages of sketchbooks with ellipse practice and the way you can do it is measure the distance from the top of the ellipse to the horizontal axis and the bottom of the ellipse to the horizontal axis and make sure they're the same. You can also go from the widest point at the left of the ellipse to the central axis and then from the central axis to the widest point at the right. And you'll want to practice refining those and getting those as perfect as possible. And generally speaking with a cylinder, you can make sure that the ellipses uh, are about the same size unless the cylinder does change uh, change sizes as it goes up or down and you'll notice here I wrote a equals a that means that the left side of the cylinder has to equal the right side exactly and then once you have that you can add more detail to the cylinder usually you're drawing this, like some kind of coffee cup or mug or something um, that has more detail than just a basic cylinder. And so that's what I'm doing now. I'm adding a lip to it, a little bit of visual information because the glaze of the ceramic cup changes color. And at any point, you can go back in the process and make changes. And then what I'm gonna wanna do is identify where the shadow hits the side of the cylinder. And so what I've done here is I've created a vertical line going in through the cylinder that indicates where the shadow is going to be. Now to find the shadow on the other side, which I will need to complete it, I trace a line from the point where it intersects the ellipse and I go through the central axis to the other side. That way I know exactly where the shadow begins on the other side of the ellipse. This is a very powerful tool and something to keep in mind whenever you're drawing any kind of cylindrical form, especially one with an open top such as this one. Then I can pull tangent lines from those intersections on either side of the ellipse and define where the shadow comes out. So I know precisely on the back side of this form where the shadow emerges. Then I can kind of echo the shape of the ellipse uh, down on the ground. Then as I bring that backside shadow up, I know exactly what I'm doing.